Good afternoon. Joe Williams once again with the encouraging word for this week. And you know, the Lord put this on my heart this week. I was thinking about things that I say and things that I don't say. As I get older, uh, how much do I listen to people and how much do I understand? You know, my wife and I now just celebrated our 35th wedding anniversary. And I'm so pleased uh, to be with such a godly woman. But to be honest, in our years knowing each other, we've known each other long before the 35 years, we've known each other for over 40 years since we were teenagers, one of the things that makes it difficult in any relationship, whether it's a friendship, a marriage, someone that you work with, are the words that you say and the words that you don't say. And I want to read to you from something that I've been reading in my quiet time in Proverbs. In fact, what I do now, and I want to encourage you to do this, um, I'm reading through the Bible, verse by verse, chapter by chapter, book by book, the Old and the New Testament. And right now I'm in Malachi. And in the New Testament, I've started the book of Acts. But what I do every day is I read one chapter of the book of Proverbs. In Proverbs, even though some of you have read it many times over, and many of you may not have, if you haven't, I really encourage you. But now, on top of everything else, I read through one chapter in the book of Proverbs. So in theory, if I read one chapter every day, I would finish the whole chapter, the whole book of Proverbs each month. And I would read it at least all the way through, at least 12 times in a year. Well, I, I don't. I'm, I'm behind just like you guys. But I probably read it through at least once every two months. And if you do start to read the book of Proverbs, you'll see a theme. Even though in some ways it's kind of random and it has lots of topics, it usually talks about your temper, your mouth, it talks about sex, um, it talks about making sure that you save, you work hard, just real basic things in life that you see all the time, real applicable to the everyday needs that we have. And this is what I want to talk to you right now about. We're going to read just a few verses from chapter 15 and one from chapter 17. And this is what I want you to think about. What should you say and what should you not say? Just think about all the situations in your life where you, if you wish you could, you could take back those words. You know, someone once said, there's all kinds of illustrations, but the words you say is kind of like trying to put toothpaste back in a tube. Once you squeeze it out, you can't put it back. Another illustration is like taking a, a, a pillow full of feathers and you rip it open and you throw it to the wind and wave it everywhere. How are you going to gather up all the feathers? You cannot recapture the words that you say. So anything that you say, you need to think and pray about it long before you let those words fly. Listen to these and, and I, hopefully this will encourage you and, uh, and, and give you strength. Um, Proverbs chapter 15, verse 1. A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. So in other words, even when someone says something in kind to you, if you answer in turn in a harsh or sarcastic or an angry way, it just escalates back and forth, back and forth, and it gets worse, right? So a gentle answer turns away wrath or anger but a harsh word stirs it up and makes it even worse. Uh, verse two, the tongue of the wise makes knowledge acceptable, but the mouth of fools spouts folly. So a wise person gently speaks the truth, but someone who is a fool, and the Bible doesn't mince words, someone who's a fool, someone, sometimes the Bible says they're a worthless person. They don't accomplish anything for society that is worthwhile. Or they're always the one who makes things worse in a family or relationship because they say foolish, hurtful things. They spout it out like a, like a dirty water fountain, not a clean water fountain. Verse 4 of chapter 15. A soothing tongue is a tree of life, but perversion in it crushes the spirit. So when you say things that are positive, not, not kissing up to people, Proverbs also talks about sometimes the wounds of a friend are better than the kisses of an enemy. But the problem is most of us 
We do a lot more kissing and wounding, all right, and a lot more hurting. And a lot of times we're really not trying to give things out in love. We're just saying it because we want to hurt someone else. So listen to this again. A soothing tongue is a tree of life. You actually give life to other people by the words that you speak. But perversion in it crushes the spirit. You crush their spirit. You harden their heart. You harm them. You damage them by the words that you speak. So the old adage that sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That's not true. We know that's not true. And then just two or three more verses. This will be a short lesson today. Proverbs uh, 15. It says, in verse 14 of, of chapter 15, the mind of the intelligent seeks knowledge, but the mouth of fools feeds on folly. If you're an intelligent person and you want the best for other people, you want the truth, you want knowledge, but someone who is a fool is always feeding on lies, feeding on gossip, feeding on anger, on resentment, and then when they feed it, it's like they vomit it back out. And I'm not trying to be crude, but that's what the Bible makes it sound like. Like you are vomiting it out, right? And then let me turn the page here. Verse 28 in the same chapter. And, and there are many of these type of verses all through uh, the book of Proverbs, but I'm just sticking to one or two chapters here. The heart of the righteous ponders how to answer. Right? If you're a righteous person, you want to do right, you think about what you're going to say before you answer. But the mouth of the wicked pours out evil things. So a wicked person, they don't have to think. They just say whatever's on their mind because it's wickedness. Verse 31, he whose ear listens to life-giving reproof will dwell among the wise. So be a good listener. Sometimes you spout off things and you get angry or you say sarcastic things because you don't want to listen to the truth. And when someone does reprove you, when they do tell you what you're doing wrong, you're so busy arguing back, trying to make your point, that you are missing the knowledge that God is sending out to you through someone else. Verse 32, he who neglects discipline despises himself but he who listens to reproof acquires understanding. So you don't like yourself. You really don't want the best for yourself if you don't want to listen sometimes to criticism and you don't want to listen to people who tell you when you need to improve or change something. You know, there is a difference between someone who's telling you in a gentle, kind way that, you know what, this needs to change and someone who's just throwing mean things out to you. Some of you are so defensive that no matter how anyone tells you any kind of thing that seems to go against whether you think you're right or wrong, then you're ready to fight back. The Bible tells you that that's the opposite of what you should be doing. And then let me finish from chapter 17, one of my favorite verses. And this is verse 28 of chapter 17. Now listen closely, even a fool when he keeps silent, is considered wise. When he closes his lips, he is counted prudent. So, you heard people say, I'd rather keep my mouth shut, and people will think I know what I'm talking about, and if I don't, I'm not trying to be sarcastic like that. But think about it. The Bible says that even someone who doesn't have knowledge, even if they're foolish and they're not knowledgeable, if they keep silent, people will say, well, man, he, he seems to have confidence and he, he or she seems to know what they're doing. But someone who's always talking just to hear their own voice or to hear their opinion, people listen to that and they say, man, that is foolish talk. He doesn't know what he's doing. She doesn't know what she's doing. So it is like it says also in the book of James, be quick to listen, slow to speak. For the anger of man does not achieve the righteousness of God. But it's not just in regards to anger. It's any opinion you give. Think, listen, and oh man, we have something that no one else has who's not a believer in Christ. We have the Holy Spirit. We ask the Holy Spirit to please tell us how to react, what to say, what not to say, 
and even when to say it. I, I've, I know I've told you this before, but sometimes you can have the right answer, know exactly what to say, but if you say it at the wrong time, it will not be received correctly. So all that is not psychological things. What it is, is a person who is controlled by the sweet, beautiful Holy Spirit. And you ask him to control your tongue. Control your, that's what it says in James, right? It says pure religion is someone who can control their tongue. Let's, let's pray right now. And I need to pray this for myself, that's for sure. Father in heaven, I just come in the name of Jesus and I ask you, Lord, help me to control my tongue. Help me to know when to speak and when not to speak. And when I do speak, God, help me to even understand that the intonations of my voice, how loud or how soft I am, when I say it, the words I say it, Lord, help me to be controlled by the sweet, precious Holy Spirit. Lord, help our tongues to be controlled by the Spirit and for us to glorify Jesus Christ in everything we say. Amen. God bless you guys. See you soon.